Welcome everybody. So today we're joined by Dr. Denise McDermott and I'm going to tell you something cool. A few weeks ago, I was invited to join her on her podcast and we went through this conversation and I wasn't sure when it ended and when it started because it was so natural and speaking to, to Denise was awesome. Uh, I It didn't feel like an interview. It just felt like, you know, two friends chatting and that's why we wanted to have her on here today because her thinking is so aligned with how we think. Now, look at the background. Denise has been working on psychiatry for some time, but some of the things we talked about were energy medicine. And, you know, we talked about, and we're going to get into it. It's going to blow your mind a little bit. I don't want to take steal too much of the thunder, <laughs> but welcome. Thank you for joining us. Kashif, I'm honored. And I agree. Prior to interviewing you, I like to not only read your amazing book, The DNA Way, but I was so touched by how much you're honoring your father's legacy. And I think one of the ways we really connected is we were taking a look at our ancestors and what inspires us. So I feel like that I kind of want to invite everyone to be more vulnerable because I think that's when the best conversations happen. Yeah, and you had this really cool way of thinking because you have to in clinically practice help people with that. And then it, it follows you in your day to day thinking and you have this unique filter, which is so powerful. That podcast with you felt like a therapy session, let's just say that, but so natural and organic. Oh my goodness, that that's really interesting. Someone last week after she finished the interview, she said, I feel like I had a healing. And I said, Wow, well, nice because somehow i'm integrating these this the honor of meeting your you kashif and the fact that you felt that way that that makes me smile thank you yeah it was awesome so you you've taken this unique approach where you know allopathic training uh, and i work with a lot of people that work around the mind from psychologists to psychiatrists etc and there's this very rigid thinking and there's there's guardrails around what you're allowed to think and what you're not allowed to think uh, because ultimately the solutions, whether they're, you know, prescriptive drugs uh, or their therapies, the thinking has to match the solution you get led to eventually. Otherwise there's a break and then you're no longer allopathic. You're no longer a doctor, right? But you've managed to heal people, maintain your position and title. And if I speak to you an hour, I don't hear any of that stuff. What I hear is true healing. I'm not saying you don't use allopathic tools. I'm just saying that uh, you, you've somehow been able to sort of evolve beyond and incorporate other things and stack and you have this amazing toolkit. So first of all, let's go back. Tell us your, your story because I know that like you just hinted that, you know, that something happened in your family and that pushed you towards a different way of thinking also. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for the way you described how you've like received me. And I think one of the most important things for all of us is to remember we're only in this moment, this moment of now. And one of the ways as an adult and child integrative psychiatrist that has the Western medicine background and the way you mentioned kind of I've ascended and layered is by keeping an open mind, championing scientific method but really connecting. I think one of the most important things at the time I was in training, I did my um, adult psychiatry at Emory University and my child psychiatry at UCLA. Back in the late 90s, early 2000s, everything with psychiatry was prescribe a pill, prescribe a pill, do this. And I have to use some gratitude. The Emory University program did a very unique hybrid where we had supervisors that were psychologists, psychoanalysts, group therapy, top of the line psychopharmacologists. So the foundation of my Western medicine training and the program I picked was very cutting edge paradigm progression. And so much of what we talked about was being aware of how you show up. So it wasn't just here's your medicine, here's your medicine. So I want to yeah. have some gratitude because there's different programs in the United States. So my own process with humility and gratitude is that I was fortunate after I finished at UCLA to have my own private practice. So one of the ways you stay really true to yourself and have integrity, whether it's in business and medicine and teaching, when you're fortunate, 
have the freedom to be a free thinker and show up for your patient, show up for my client, show up for the soul with more of an energy match. I've been practicing wellness, wellness medicine. I can now I'm calling it universe medicine, but it keeps mm. evolving because I think when you keep an open mind and you and I covered um, a very important uh, point you brought up in our show that we did together is that, and I like to use really fun words, everyone. I call it the pulse of consciousness. So at this moment in 2023, the amount of information we have about nutrition, fitness, sensory perception, health, we have, we are on information overload. So you're going to run across different doctors and professionals that might be practicing in a paradigm that's more hospital like they might have more this. I've been fortunate to have the best training and then to think for myself. And one of the big differences I think I have is I should, well, I think I'll, I want to invite, I think a lot of people are starting to have is looking when you work with someone, you want to help someone to activate their own best friendness, their own higher self, their own best health. And I always put the torch back to the person calling me on the phone for a referral. There's a lot of yeah. shame when it comes to mental health. So I think when you engage someone in the process and invite them on their own health journey, that's where it becomes less about one idea and it becomes about all the possibilities of the tools to healing. That, that little piece there is so amazing because I didn't even think about it until you said it. But when we see people heal, we work with a lot of people that we believe have been armed with genetic superpowers that fall into a pit of kryptonite because they were misaligned in context. And, and then it feels like this taboo of around, I have a mental health issue, whether, whatever, you know, whether it's anxiety, depression, procrastination, whatever. Um, and they believe they have it, that word have, like, this is me as a part of me. Now to separate yourself, step away and be that best friend, the beautiful thing that you said, a friend to yourself and support yourself right? Without judgment or without labels and without that, I have it and, and start to unpack why the root cause, right? As opposed to like, I, here's what I have now, how do I manage and treat it? Let's ask why. And if you start to ask why as a friend to yourself, as a person that cares for yourself, not as a person that's coming in for a band aid, right? But I truly care for myself and I believe that I should be the healthiest version of myself. How do I achieve that? So it's a very different question to ask your clinician, but there also aren't so many clinicians that are armed to answer that question, right? And that's where you thrive. Thank you. And you just mentioned the word non-judgment. Yeah. Whether it's a question from an internal medicine standpoint, mental health, you really need to, everyone needs to embrace the dialogue you have with yourself and the power of our words thoughts and actions. So you were invited on the embrace your neuro style and beyond series that I have. And I now have that trademarked because I am very blessed to be bridging and the word neuro style, embracing your neuro style and beyond. That's like giving yourself a hug. It's adding yeah. the fact that no matter what Kashif, you myself, I'd like to maybe even give some examples. I know you mentioned um, how much you love your niece and you shared in the DNA way some of her mental health perceptions of some anxiety feelings. When you have the concept of embrace your neuro style and beyond, it's defined as we all process and perceive information in our own unique way. And to make it fun and to grab people's attention, I talk about the, the fabulous five biological, psychological, social, cultural, spiritual, coupled with sixth sense intuition. And one of the reasons why I'm so honored to be here with you is you have this amazing mind that's synthesizing and attracting some of the most open-minded humans on the planet that want to use scientific method, functional genomics, functional medicine to empower people 
to make their mm. own best choices so they honor their unique neuro style. Very cool. And neuro style, I mean, I've heard you use this term. I haven't heard it much outside of my conversations with you, you know, and but it's such an important word because it's not a condition, it's not a problem, it's a style. And if you understand you are a Ferrari, you're not a truck, or you are a truck and you're not a Ferrari. I'm a Bugatti, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting yeah, my, no. by the way, it's important to have fun. Keep going, everyone. Yeah, you're the black version that was $18 million of, I think they only made three of them. So the, uh, yeah, and that knowing that it's a style, meaning here's your unique uh, traits, doesn't mean it's a problem. It means that you're designed for something. And if you're feeling like it's a problem, you're in the wrong place. Right, your style—you you cannot mis misalign style and context, and that's that's where problems come from. So well, yes, there are true, call it chemical imbalances. There's true acute problems, right? And that leads me to a more sort of nefarious way of creating a, a very positive label, like you did. So neuro style really helps somebody understand. First, figure out who you are. Right. So stop talking about the problem. Who are you? And then what are you designed for? But there's also terms like neurodivergent, which are being used to describe um, children, for example, that have behavioral development issues like autism. And what I'm finding is that it's disempowering, whether what you're saying is empowering, which is neuro style is let's find my unique superpower and understand who I am. And that's a world where there's no more problems. It's all it's all great. Neurodivergent is saying let's discount the fact that chemicals, pollutants, horrible food, you know, certain medications that many children take at an early age cause neural inflammation. And let's just say you're neurodivergent, you're a different type of neurology. And that and you, you have a label that does the opposite. It disempowers what somebody actually needs is that this was caused, right? Uh, and so we're seeing both ends of the spectrum. Uh, I'd be interesting, it'd be interesting to hear from you because you work with so many children with regard to neurodivergence, you asked me, how does that, how do I envision or utilize the label? So a couple of things. Number one, we are all multidimensional. So we discussed the word neurostyle, but that doesn't mean that when you go to see a doctor, a holistic practitioner, that you don't get a label or a working diagnosis that takes scientific method, but you as a human being don't want to land on a diagnostic label. So mm. neurodivergent, neurotypical, I think those are fine for scientific studies. And the pulse of consciousness is moving. We're realizing that the words, thoughts, and actions we tell ourselves can also make us sick, not just the food we eat, the news we ingest. Right. So I'm pro-science, pro-all of it with an integration so I find that people, when they come to see me and I have, they, they're like, we want to see the psychiatrist. We want the diagnosis. And of course, I have to give them a form to turn their insurance. But from the very first start of practice, and I've been in practice in total almost 25 years, I always knew that when I see, like, if it was you, it'd be like your kashif. So here's your behavioral traits. Here's this. And then I would always say from a Western medicine, you're fitting these categories and here are all the holistic treatments. But I always invited them to not think of themselves as I have major depression, I have ADHD, I have autism. Now, some people, though, feel empowered because they've been suffering with some severe, maybe checking rituals, anxiety, PTSD, or sensory perception channels ch challenges. And some people love to know from a scientific method in the Western world, we say we've got these working diagnoses. But then I challenge people to have a wellness mindset, not an illness mindset, and then teach them like cognitive behavioral reframing, dialectical behavioral treatments in real time by modeling that you, you create your own health. So what I love about your approach and the DNA way and functional genomics is that we get the data, we get the scientific method of the linear data, and then we look at what kind of environment we need to build for our own unique neuro style. 
So I find that it's a mix, Kashif, that some people love going, oh, now I know I have autism or autism working diagnosis or I, oh, I have major depression. But I challenge people to take an empowerment pathway and be careful, like, like be in this moment, but watch yourself and how you talk to yourself. It goes yeah. back to that being your own best friend yeah. and the multidimensionality, even if you and I were to take one clip of this show one sentence we say, we can be misinterpreted. So yeah. the word neuro style that we all process and perceive things in our own unique way, biological, psychological, social, cultural, spiritual, sixth sense intuition, in any moment of now for health and well-being, you bridge material science, non-material, holistic health, nutrition, the environments we're in. So I think neurodivergent, I agree with you. That word, just like if people are picking a political party, can cause divide. So if a word or a diagnosis causes someone empowerment, mm. and then they start to think of themselves of a place of health, that's higher level of non-judgment and higher integration. We can't erase, you mentioned in our interview when I had you on my show, I think, was it how many years? Was it 27 years before... In academic, can you cite yeah. the data? Can you cite that data right now? Yeah, That'd literally, I was speaking to a gentleman out here in Toronto who's very tied in with academic research. He's an MD himself, medical doctor, and he, by the way, deals with a lot of mood and behavior, and mental health issues. He works with the the police officers out here, so he works with a lot of the trauma cases. And we were talking about hormones, and there's still this belief around allopathic doctors that certain hormone treatment causes cancer. And this was debunked about 20 years ago. Now there is some precision around some people make toxic hormones or are estrogen dominant, for example, so they may be at greater risk. But the blanket statement that hormones cause cancer was debunked 20 years ago. So I asked him, why do doctors still say this? If it was like the publications are clear from highly credible sources, he says, because the average doctor requires 25 years to change their opinion like what does that even mean how is that possible they said that's the amount of time that something has to linger and if you think about a development of a new medication if it was done properly you know it's 10 years just in research mm -hmm. so that that training over do not it's, it's better to not make a mistake than to try right so this high adversity around risk uh which causes even proven concepts to not be accepted in practice. So whatever you're getting from your doctor, if they're not like yourself, integrative or functionally trained, if it's just straight allopathic, you're getting 25 year old technology. I love what you say. And this is the unpilled podcast. I want to talk about prescribing and then I'd like to even push the envelope because I have a question for you. I listened to one of your podcasts about junk DNA. That's right. okay. Sure. So a couple of things. One I love that you and I both use the word tools, tools in the toolbox. When you use the word tools, when you start to pay attention to more open-minded language, you're open to all the possibilities of health. So you want to look for a doctor who knows which tools, listens to you carefully. It's nice if they have their own practice of good fitness, nutrition, mindfulness, and you also should feel empowered. If you are having your own health issue, bring articles into your doctor, mm. ask them to be open-minded because some doctors, if they get some new data, maybe they were just so busy. So there's a, it's a bridge. You, you want a doctor who is open-minded, looks at all the tools, tries not to prescribe. That's always been, I've had people call me Kashif and say, will you prescribe if you need to? And I said, yes. <laughs> and that was so funny. I'm like, wow, I have, like, that's my street rep. That like, so I like, it's, it's been my street reputation for a long, long time. Yeah. And I say, no, 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 I know what to do, but we have to look at the whole picture. And I spend time with them on the phone and I, I integrate other sensory perception. And, and even, I know you push the envelope with your thinking. So I think when you're going in, for me, just so we do the more Western medicine discussion that bridges, mm. I still carry those credentials. I mm. do a one hour initial consultation for adults, two hour for children. And I take an old fashioned interview 
So I still think in the scientific method of what I need to, is there a, is there a Western diagnosis? However, most people that come to see me that are highly bright with some ADD, attention issues, anxiety, this could probably be like a whole nother show. Mm. I look at the way to talk about it from a Western science. Then I ask them about their job, their fitness, what happens when they listen to things, um, what's your sensory perception, how much are you mindfully ingesting your environment, your news, what nutrition, I have people go on elimination diets. So I really invite people to kind of have a framework of their neurostyle understanding, still bridge the labels that we need to. And then I really wear the, the hat of championing scientific method but like all the tools in the toolbox. And mm. I have to tell you, I have not had, I don't allow pharmaceutical reps to come visit me for year, like probably decades now because I don't want to be front loaded. It doesn't mean that they're not trying to help or give me samples and that was fine. But I really liked it when there was almost like the, the doctors who took too much money from the pharmaceutical industry, that there was like more parameters so I can mm. proudly say I've never taken pharmaceutical money. And in my Dr. Denise show, I'm just about to now with all my trademarks, take it to the next level, but I haven't taken advertising money. I've been self-funding, self-doing because I wanted to be more tabla rasa. So when you're looking at a show called the Unpilled Podcast and you're trying to pick out which doctor you should see in the world, you want a doctor that's open-minded, integrative, and is going to listen to you and wants you to reach your own thrive. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, when I listen to you, I, I hear, so just to extract something there for everybody, the way you talk about medication and reframing what its purpose is, right? So when somebody comes to you, if the sole purpose is tell me what pill to take, that's the wrong goal, right? It it's should actually, actually, I really literally, I have to educate a lot of people because usually yeah. by the time they get to me, cause I'm at that top of the food chain because I'm an adult and child psychiatrist, MD, a lot of people have gone to the occupational therapist for children with autism, right. speech and language. So you, they usually feel like that's what they need. So I'm not saying they're wrong, yeah. but we invite the holistic approach. Yeah. And if you look at the toolkits and, and the tools in the toolkit and you spread them out on the table, it's like this thing, this pill, to me, it sounds like here's something to take the edge off while we actually figure it out. Right. Because this isn't us figuring it out. By me prescribing this, yeah, I might numb what you're complaining about, but we didn't figure it out yet. So here's the acute emergency response. Now we have to put time and effort into this. And let's figure out why you got here because you didn't feel like this five years ago or maybe five months ago. What changed? Right. So and to me, that seems like a more rational way to use all the tools in the toolkit. And unfortunately, it's just so easy to say, sounds like this. Here's the pill to take. And then it doesn't work in six months. Well, let's try a different pill. And, you know, now there's pharmacogenomics, which uh, genetic testing that allows you to match your pills to your genetic makeup you know how do you metabolize certain molecules and how does your how do your genes actually do those things which then keeps you further down into that path so i love what you said there because it's like here's the full answer yeah i have pills for a certain person who needs it today but i'm not going to end it there i'm going to work on what they really need that they didn't know that they need it right and that's beautiful about what you do in your work Try Pectisol Modified Citrus Pectin today and see for yourself how it can help you manage healthy inflammation levels to support your detox and weight loss goals. Listeners get 20% off with code UNPILL20 at ecoeugenics.link forward slash unpill. That's E-C-O-N-U-G-E-N-I-C-S dot. Well, I also want to just bridge all that you do and say thank you. I call it an infinity loop back to you and also the Thanks. listeners that we're living in a very exciting time where we know that the Holy grail is anti-inflammation right. and epigenetics. So if we look at our own unique neuro style, our own biological DNA, our own choices that we're making, you know, there are people who have a very strong family history of schizophrenia, severe bipolar, where meds have saved the day and they are part of the toolbox longstanding. 
So I actually was at a social event where I was saying to someone, my son's thriving so much with his fitness, his nutrition, his development, his schooling, that he's off something uh, that he needed to be on. And I don't even use the words. I don't want to pathologize my own child. And the person that was having the event, she's on meds and they're saving her life. And she took it. I go, oh, no, please, no. I am a doctor. If they're helpful, I prescribe and they're, they can be game changers. Mm. So I think one of the problems is sometimes people choose, am I a team take the medicine or team not take the medicine? And people aren't remembering we're in this together. Yeah. We have our own unique neuro style. We have anti-inflammation. We have epigenetics. We have multidimensionality and anything just like in a news clip. We can all be misunderstood. I even followed up and called the person and said, hi, I just want you to know I had a great time at your event. I donated some money. I said, I didn't want you to think when I was saying how well my son's thriving with exercise only, that that was a judgment towards someone that is having life-saving medicines. Yeah. I think that's one of the biggest myth busters and the problems with society. So much of what drives the pharmaceutical industry and media and the wealthiest people on the planet is greed and fear. Hmm. And so we need to have words like neurostyle, remember anti-inflammation, epigenetics, your unique plan. You need to be open-minded when you show up to a conversation. What's Kashif's hat he's wearing? What's Dr. Hmm. Denise's hat? And that can change throughout our lives. So it's very fluid. And that's where you want to stay. That's where I have the embrace your neurostyle and beyond because when you have and beyond, you're open. You're open to new ideas. You're open to changing your behavior. You know, the, you mentioned your son. We have to dig into that if you don't mind. Because I, I can tell you that when, when we practice, clinicians, uh, doctors, are some of the patients that need the most help from us. So we, we have plenty of patients that are doctors, right? I actually had a comment on Instagram today where I, I posted something about toxic chemicals and somebody said, well, why don't doctors say this? It's probably not true. And I say, how healthy is your doctor? They're probably diabetic, depending how old they are, right? Because they're practicing what they've learned, which is symptom masking. And so you've done this amazing, beautiful thing where everything we're talking about, it, you've actually practiced with your son who you know needed your support and is now in this amazing thrive state. So if you don't mind, give us some background there and sort of the journey he went through. I'm actually smiling and I almost have tears of gratitude. So a couple things. One, I do practice gratitude and yeah. I'm grateful to be a mother. I am an adoptive mom and I adopted my son at birth and his birth mother, mother and I met and I haven't met his birth father, but I have the family background, but his birth mom gave me a lot of the family history. So I was very fortunate to go into being the mother of Kieran with my eyes wide open and I feel like our children are our teachers. So I want you to all look at your children that way. I feel like I knew both his biological mother and biological father met at residential treatment centers. Those are the places where the children might have the wildest behavior on the planet. Hmm. So I, eyes wide open, knew that, you know, I didn't know all of it, but I kind of had this, I'm up for the adventure. I have a lot of tools in my own toolbox. So the very first time I realized that my son had a sensory challenge was when we were at fireworks and it was when he was like only three years old. And I'll never forget this Kashif. The minute the firework went off, it was like someone was murdered. Mm -hmm. I had to take him. He was crying so hard and find a shielded building. So he had sensory perception with sound. He liked to wear certain clothing textures with food, troubles staying in the bathroom for a long time. He was very, um, his language was on time, very good looking kid, very active. So I just, you know, you go as a parent and you do what you do. Then I knew that there was um, on one side of the family, I want to be respectful to their privacy um, of which side of the family. There was a two generation I knew of suicide completion, ADHD, dysgraphia, and on another side of the family, some less than honest behavior. So I had some front loading of the genetics I was told. 
And then my son started school and he was very active. A lot of boys are active and I don't feel like the public schools in the entire world, they should all be experiential. And I think mm -hmm. everyone should go into a public school or a private school with their own neuro style awareness. Because once you create a safe, sacred place, anyone can thrive. That's what happened with my son. He went from having sensory issues, doing occupational therapy so he could get exposed to different things. He had what's called an individual education plan at public school that still failed him because he would get pulled out and then he would go back into what would be like New York Times Square. Like So he'd go to a safe place for a bit to learn that get thrown back in. They were doing the best they could. They really were. Everyone I've had... So, and then my son, I am not, I was not my son's doctor, but he had his own doctor that's a child psychiatrist. And I want to respect my son because I've never put labels onto him. And I even have an idea of you meeting him someday. So mm. what I can tell you right now with absolute like humility and care for any parent out there that's trying to figure out their own child's unique sensory perception, neuro style, food choice, too much lighting, too much noise. Uh, focus level, anxiety, mood, whatever, stay in the place of faith and find the right environment. So during the pandemic, I was very blessed to find the right school. He's in this exceptional school that allows all different sensory styles. The minute my son started not feeling like he was stupid and that they could adapt to his learning style, he's got an entrepreneur mind. He's highly intuitive he has dysgraphia, so when you hear an idea, you can't write it as fast, but he verbally just gets it. So mm. I feel very fortunate, but I feel very also like I'm here as a champion to not only build my brand, build the neurostyle concept, but also have money because I feel like all children should have more opportunities once they know their DNA, the right environment. And so my sensory success challenge for my son is that he this year finished up seventh grade and he got most motivated he excelled two years ahead of decoding he's been off all western medicine for over a year he's taken his own desire to have physical fitness to a next level his role models are navy seals arnold schwarzenegger he's working out we're practicing an anti-inflammation nutrition program because he is a kid i don't want to ever restrict too much so i let him make his choices, but he's very, you know, you want, you don't want to be too rigid. And right now he's volunteering. So he has reached what I would call his neuro style thrive. He's a strong leader. He and I did a little series called that my son, my teacher, before he started being like a hot tamale with all the girls. And he goes, mom, mom, we don't say ADHD in our house. We say neuro style. Mm. So he has been around an environment of practicing non-judgment. And then as a mother, I am always reframing and explaining, but not being too clinical. He likes it when I use mindful profanity. I mean, I'm kind of fun. He told his friends he thinks I'm so cool. Cause I, and I go, why? He goes, you're unpredictable. Sometimes you act like my mom. Sometimes you act like my friend. Okay, so enough about my son. Um, I just feel like I'm walking the walk because I have 50,000 hours of patient care but I, too, when my son looked at a video of himself, self-awareness, and there's no judgment on any label. The most brilliant people on the planet have ADHD. The most incredible people have autism spectrum, Asperger's, OCD, anxiety. So I'm not saying don't say those terms, but say what you want to say to yourself for the highest level of health. My son looked at videos of himself four months ago and said, Mom, I really looked kind of autistic three years ago. I go, and I go, well, we really weren't calling it that. And I just didn't, I just left it at that. And he goes, mom, I've transformed. So mm. he's made these before and after videos for himself that he's posted on his own Instagram. He looks like a little super Molly. He's got all the girls. He looks like a Greek God and his self-confidence, but I'm going to be real vulnerable. Mm. About two, even two years ago, I didn't know how successful he might be when I leave the planet, when I'm no longer here. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be vulnerable. I'm sharing all these like happy outcomes, but I have to tell you, it was a big part of my own, your own biggest concern when you have children or is how will they be healthy? How will they interact in the world? 
So I feel like, feel like when people have access to functional genomics, doctors that bridge integration, and you create environments in education, in nutrition, in fitness, in volunteerism that matches your unique neurostyle, and you don't judge yourself, watch and be amazed. I mean, I'm still blown away. My mom can't even believe it. Every time I'm picking him up from camp, all the kids are like, bye, Karen. And his yeah. social skills are next level. And so I don't want to make this about um, his diagnoses because it really isn't. It's about his neurostyle. He has found his neurostyle thrive. And I would want him to tell his own story. I didn't, that's why I haven't. I've been so careful on the way I've done my brand. I could have done the sexy thing. Like I have the child with, and I just, I just wanted him to come into his own because I thought if I keep an open mind to how his neurostyle can be, and that's what I would invite anyone to do with their health, your own health. Once you keep an open mind and you have healthy habits, you can't even imagine what can happen. So first of all, you're amazing, you know, because the same call it cards can be dealt in many different contexts and the outcome can be very different. And your thinking allowed the foundation for him to thrive. So he did a lot of work on his own. Kudos to him. Yes. Right. But it, th there was a foundation and environment that allowed for it. And that was you. So this story is amazing. And there's a reason you guys were connected at a certain point, right? At birth. So this is awesome. And it just leads to, to me, it's inspiration. It's like, here's everybody now can hear and see that their outcome is optional. You know, that the, the environment, the culture, you know, the support levels that they input will change the output. And you can decide what the outcome is going to be and maybe not to 100% certainty, but you can definitely influence it significantly. And that's why, again, first thing I said, same cards being dealt in different contexts could be different outcome. And you're proof I, of also, that. I also need to say this. I really want humanity to figure out a better way to allow parents to be there for their children. Mm. We need to have hybrid work situations because I'm in a very unique situation. I've turned down working for some major networks for doing things because I wanted to be the one that does all the pickups and drop offs for my son. And I've held that sacred space for him. That's another part of his thrive yeah. is that when he would get in the car and have a really tough sensory day before he went to this new private school, I had a whole way to help calm him down, to have his self-esteem be okay. Because if you're in any environment where you feel like you're getting beaten down, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're not this enough, you start to believe it. Mm. So you need to also surround yourself with good parents, good role models, good teachers, good coaches. And if you're an adult, because I work with adults too, you want to work with bosses and team leaders that see you for who you are. We all have yeah. different super avatar powers. So I wish the world had more time to hold that sacred space. So I, I hope that parents can be there for their kids in the most crucial developmental to help them find what their right environment is. Mm, for sure. Now, at this point, I mean, we've been discussing this the whole time, but we haven't dug into, for, for the sake of the listeners, you, we're talking about neurostyle. How, does, how do I, how does somebody identify their neurostyle? Who am I? Where do you well, start? This, this is where I keep it really nice. Like this is where it's like, you're defining it. You're I'm inviting you. It's we all process and perceive information in our own unique way. So neurostyle is interchangeable. Like once someone got it on the, on an interview, he's like, Oh, Denise, I just want you to know my neurostyle doesn't right. do the freeways. So uh, when you look at neurostyle, it's a very, it's a really neurostyle. So from a Western medicine, you might want to say, if you go to your doctor, well, my neurostyle, I have some focus issues. I have this. So it's more a qualitative where you don't put yourself in a linear box. You look at yourself with all the flavors of who you are. Biologically, maybe I have a predisposition. Let me just be vulnerable. I feel yeah. very fortunate. My father got sober when I was 11. So I've like beat those genetics because I'm not an alcoholic. 
but we don't judge alcoholism. We say biologically, I was pre front loaded for um, some possible ADD, anxiety, substance use. Then we go psychological. What are the factors in your life? We go social, socioeconomic. I know that you thrived when you had some poverty, loss mm-hmm. of your father. So you took your neuro style, Kashif, just like Dr. Denise, we take our styles mm. and then we build the ingredients. And so if you go to see a Western medicine doctor and you're so happy and relieved to know that your child has autism spectrum, anxiety, ADD, but then you don't want to land on just, you're like, yay, we have a plan because the insurance is going to cover this. We know scientific method this, but then you say, start saying my neuro style. Mm-hmm. So my son used to say, my neuro style is very sensitive to sound. So I like to use neuro style as you inviting yourself to have self-awareness. I talk about the ingredients. I spoke about this at the Dalai Lama's Body and Mind Life Conference on nurturing children's mental health. I talked about awareness, self-love, and altruism. So neuro style is a non-judgmental term for you to integrate into your everyday life and look at your biological, psychological, social, cultural, spiritual, and sixth sense intuition. Mm. The the linear, the non-linear, the Newtonian view of the universe, the quantum, and the and beyond, because we're growing so much in evolution as human beings. And I feel like we definitely need to have a part two because I have so much to say. But the bottom line is, is your neuro style is multidimensional. And I'm purposely not going to come up with a your neuro style A, B, C, because that defeats my whole definition of it. Yeah, so, I think, yeah, I got it. It's like the, the getting the exploration is the biggest part of it. It's like you have to actually do the work and you probably already know. It's just you haven't, you haven't empowered yourself to harness it and own it. It's you already know. Here's who I am. Here's how I feel. Uh, it's going through the exercise of putting it somewhere, right? And, well, and it. You know who's coming to mind right now out of nowhere, just a flash I can see her, yeah. is Helen Keller. Right. Look at Helen Keller. Mm. What a neuro style champion. Yeah. Think about what it would be like from a sensory perception to do a day on earth with mm. the challenges Helen Keller had. And think about what she was able to achieve. So I feel like when we have this, like, by the way, this does not take away the fact that at any moment in time, Kashif, humans can go through crisis, stabilization, and thrive. I don't want to ever negate the fact that when I work with people and they're thinking about killing themselves or they're struggling with heroin addiction, that there's not major suffering. Mm. But what we need to do then is use that energy of suffering, build a team, have the right tools, come from a place of non-judgment and just do the work. Mm. I've gone through times in my life that are unimaginable and full of suffering. I know you have too. Mm. Right? Yeah, for sure. Right? And people want to see the shiny parts of us. That's why when I was starting to do this nutrition program I'm doing, I didn't want to do these big before and after photos because I don't want to be like a piece of meat. I mean, I like that we're on earth and if you look good, it all is nice and that sells. But I like people to actually listen to also what I have to say. (laughs) And I don't want it to be as judgmental. It doesn't mean health isn't beautiful. It doesn't mean the before and afters aren't great. It doesn't mean that anti-inflammation nutrition with transformations aren't fantastic. But I just want to get across the fact that we're so much more that's why the neuro style, and I love, I love your body of work um, with the DNA way. I love the team of people that you've attracted, and I love the integrity. I want to really, right now, you didn't ask me about this, but I feel like I have another term called in in, in integrity, in integrity to yourself, and in integrity to others. And that goes along with awareness, self love, and altruism. Your mindset and the way you're handling your own exploration and have and continue to, Kashif, you had the loss of your father, 
you had this incredible hard work ethic, success, entrepreneurism. You took a look at a picture of yourself and you're like, okay, I have all this material success, but what's going on with my health? Yeah. So you are such a, I just want to thank you in advance for everything you're doing uh, because you've, you've taken a look at yourself and that's your own, what I call I am awareness. So that's it. I, I know I'm very loquacious, <laughs> but I'm very passionate about this. And I'm passionate about all of us kind of looking at ourselves with love and, oh, I know I have to just show you this. I showed every, I showed you this on the break. So I also am very playful. <laughs> I have this little Wonder Woman doll. And I think if you think of yourself as your own superhero and how does that look for the ingredients you have, it becomes a lot of fun too. <laughs> yeah, it can be for sure. Uh, and, you know, you mentioned in there, actually very early on in this conversation, you mentioned universe medicine and you mentioned even now the, the, there's multi dimensions of how we have to look at ourselves. So I know we're, we're, we don't have much time here, but I want to make sure respecting your time, maybe you can give us a little bit of that. You know, we, this might we be a teaser for, this might be a teaser for a part two. Yeah. So I feel very fortunate to have such an open mind. And when I say multidimensional and I talk about the quantum universe, I saw one of your interviews and you were talking about junk DNA and right. you mentioned the word aliens. So I feel like after all this great, this great meeting today, this next topic, I feel like I'd want to pass the torch and just talk about it a little bit about sensory perception, intuition, portals of consciousness, and my mind is so open because I share an office with a practicing medium that's really well known in the world. And she said to me, the joke of the universe, Denise, is that you're more intuitive. And I use the word intuitive instead of psychic. Intuitive, we all have intuition. Mm -hmm. So I am very blessed on my own consciousness explorer journey to even recently have attracted one of the most brilliant minds, Tom Massari, is a sleep medium. And mm -hmm. I he sent me his book that just was um, written. That's he did what's called automatic writing and it's called conversations with an alien, but mm -hmm. I don't like to talk about things like this on a show like this without having scientific method, a greater degradation of how do you look at sensory perception? And so I can tell you this, I went and trained in 2015 in remote viewing with a female who has a nurse background, a PhD in consciousness, and has done humanitarian work. So I asked the question, how do we access unseen energy? And I spent a whole week training in remote viewing. And that particular individual is Dr. Angela T. Smith. She's, um, it's a whole nother show. Mm -hmm. But when you did the commercial that said about, well, what's going on with the junk DNA and then use the word aliens, I was like, wow, I could do a whole topic. One of the um, reasons why it's embrace your neurostyle and beyond is that we're living in the earth realm. And I'm happy to say the earth game. But when I say I also practice universal medicine, my and beyond has been fortunate to be the doctor for children whose parents are practicing mediums. I'm also the doctor who goes to events with um, Dr. Dan Siegel and Minos Kafatos and how we discuss psychiatry, consciousness, and quantum universe. And so your theory of what's gone on with this DNA, the junk DNA, I was like, wow, I want to talk to Kashif about that. So, mm -hmm. so, so my and beyond is that I also would not diagnose someone. When someone comes to me, if they're vibrating at a very high sentient being frequency, where they're accessing um, different time elements in the future and the past. I have taken the scientific method. I have gone and done like a past life review, Akashic record, Vedic reading. I am very well read. I have my own version of sensory perception giftedness. And I swim six days a week for about 60 minutes to 90 minutes where I access different uh, awarenesses and portals of consciousness. So you don't want to label someone crazy if they have high level intuition 
So that ties in with other beings, but that's for a whole nother topic, not for today. Yeah, it sounds like we need a, like that, another. Yeah. But I want to tell people this is very important. Your own awareness, your own sensory perception, get the data, do the work, scientific method. You yeah. don't ever just listen to Kashif. You don't ever just listen to Dr. Denise. You are your own champion of health. You listen to people you respect, and then you help solve your own problems. For sure. You have to be your own health quarterback because it's like all these pieces are all valuable, but they're usually pieces. You need the whole pie. And then that scientific, and you don't often hear both where like, here's the, the functional answer, but here's also the scientific vetting process to make sure that it's reasonable and responsible and safe. And those things kind of get separated, but they don't need to be right. It's, it's a, it's a vetting tool that can vet anything. It just in regards to remote viewing, just to make sure everybody is clear, you're referring to sort of, um, being have able ever, to visualize, sorry. Have you trained in remote viewing? I haven't trained, but I, I read about CIA experiments. Yes. In, in the, yeah. Yeah. That yes. Type of thing. Okay. So let me just tell you a little bit. So I do love scientific method and Dr. Angela T. Smith is MindWise Consulting, and she is the, was the only female of the Institute of Remote Viewing. She was so gifted from an intuition standpoint. Dean Radin, she's in the top 13 of highly intuitive people. So there's a lot of science behind um, her process. She was a nurse, PhD. And so I went for a week, and what remote viewing is, it's the actual process is you're testing your ability. You get, this is what happens, you get a um, an envelope and in the envelope is some either article picture or something you have no idea what's in that envelope and there's a scientific method process where you're supposed to show up to the session open-minded put the time the date how you're feeling in your name and you don't get to open the envelope it just has a coordinate on it you write the numbers then the first thing you do is you have a pen and you just write a mat right away automatically do whatever squiggle comes to mind. <clears throat> and then you're trained and to touch different parts of the line and you have different feelings. It might feel empty. It might feel like air. It might feel like water. And in 35 to 60 minutes, you build the story of sensory perception by accessing unseen energy. I hit all my targets that week and I had wow. never done it before. And so I wanted to do scientific method to really look at. So when people start saying, well, why if someone has high level intuition? And by the way, Joseph McMonagall was one of the first, they, the way they found him, he's one of a very paradigm progression pioneer remote viewer. He, they were, they had this theory. He should have died so many more times than he died, mm. but he didn't. And then the same thing with like Michael Jordan getting the, so this is everyday intuition. It's not just, you just want to, you want to like, there's remote viewing, but then there's the Kashif Khan, like the idea, the day it just flashed in your mind or right. someone that's making the best recipe ever. So we have intuition, but the remote viewing is literally something that the CIA <clears throat> did use to help build, but solve cases, solve problems. And Angela T. Smith's had me, I haven't done it because I've, I've got the neuro style mission and I'm a mama, but I have helped her where she's given me a target where we were looking for missing persons. And then my office mate, Jennifer Schaefer, has been working with the FBI for over 10 years doing profiling and pro bono work. So we wow. have other sensory perception giftedness that's also part of human evolution and I don't even like the word alien. I came up with an idea of love all kind, and it's in caps. Mm -hmm. And I call it AK because we all are sentient beings. And I'm not saying we don't want to go see a movie Aliens or we can't say an alien because it's another mm -hmm. universe. But if you use the word all kind, love all kind, it's not fear-based. Mm -hmm. And it keeps you open to the portals of consciousness. Um, there's so much more you can tell. I have a lot to say about this. So I'm going to do what yeah, I call really myself. myself. Yeah, it's time for part two. Uh, we'll work on that. <laughs> Meanwhile, I wanted to thank you for your time because I know how valuable it is. And there's a lot of people waiting to work with you to heal. Uh, and not only that, you and your family and the work that you do incredible. So thank you. Um, and if anybody wants to reach out to you, how, how do they find you? 
I'm on Instagram at Dr. Denise MD. I'm in Manhattan Beach, California. I've got a website, drdenisemd.com and ascensionmedia.love. And um, I'm hoping to do a lot more media. I'm in a growth phase. And I want to thank you for the work that you do, the time that you do, the reels that you have, the education, the sound bites, the commercials, and your way to truly be a servant leader. And it's an, it's an honor to know you and an honor to be on the show. That's a pleasure. I am here to serve. I'm going to keep doing it. So thank and you. As am I. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a remember, embrace your neurostyle and beyond. For sure. Thanks.